I want to paint a scene for you. And then I want to ask you a question. The scene is this. I want you to imagine that you're looking at, out at the world and that you're looking at some mountains and all of a sudden the mountains, uh, they begin to crumble. They begin to fall apart. And as they're falling apart, uh, the earth is opening up. It's shaking beneath your feet. And there is volcanic ash beginning to be spewed into the sky. And that that ash is now covering the sunlight and it's starting to get dark. And as you just look around you, you feel as if the natural order that you've always taken for granted, it's melting and it's disintegrating right before your eyes. Now, if you were looking at that, how would you feel? I know how I would feel. I'd be terrified. I'd be scared to death. Now, we're going to look at a hymn. And here's what's amazing about this hymn. The hymn writer says that we don't have to feel that way, that if we were in those circumstances to use his language, our heart could be calm as the summer's ocean. How is that possible? That the mountains could be crumbling, that the earth could be melting, and yet our heart would be like water that doesn't even have a ripple on it. That's how calm it is. Now, if you're somebody struggling with anxiety and worry, you need this. I know I need this hymn. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk us through it. And there'll be some difficult sections, but the difficulties where the fun is. That's where we've really got to engage our minds. Here's the first stanza. Great former of this various frame, our souls adore thine awful name and bow and tremble while they praise the ancient of eternal days. Now, it's purposeful. The hymn writer begins by focusing on God. And from that focus, we're going to see two points of comparison or contrast as we move further down. And it begins with that statement that God is the eternal ancient of days. He's eternal. He's been around um, always. And we have so much trouble even conceiving of that. The second stanza says, Thou, Lord, with unsurprised survey sawest nature rising yesterday, and as tomorrow shall thine eyes see earth and stars and ruin lie. Now, we think of this universe being really, really old, don't we? You know, it goes way back in time, and we think about stars and planets and these things as if they exist for millions or who knows how many billions of years before stars finally would burn out. It just seems like the universe is infinite in size and has been around and is nearly eternal. But what's so helpful is the hymn writer puts the universe beside God. And next to God, it says, he saw nature rising yesterday. The origin of the universe was like yesterday to God. And it'll be like tomorrow. However long the universe lasts, it's just like tomorrow. And then the earth and the stars are going to lie in ruin. That's how great God is. That's the significance of him being uniquely eternal. The next stanza says, Beyond an angel's vision bright, thou dwellest in self-existent light, which shines with undiminished ray, while suns and worlds and smoke decay. So there's this picture that, again, we think that the world's pretty stable. We talk about there being scientific laws and that kind of thing. But actually, while the world is disintegrating, God dwells in this self-existent light that is undiminished over time. And so what we've got to see is that the contrast between God and the universe, the universe is fragile. The universe is fleeting. It's unstable. But God, he's unchanging. He's eternal. And what we're going to see is that's going to be the anchor of our hope in just a few minutes. Now, the next stanza, the contrast changes. It's no longer God and the universe. It's God and us. Uh, the hymn writer says, Our days a transient per period run and change with every circling sun. And in the firmest state we boast, a moth can crush us into dust. Now, I love that final picture. That's one of these moments you just want to sit on for a second. Because if you think about that moment in life when you thought or do think right now that you are invulnerable, that, uh, that nothing can harm you, that you are strong, that you can control yourself, that you uh, have a firm grip on your existence, the hymn writer reminds us that it only takes a moth to crush us into dust. And he's not exaggerating. Because uh, if you just think of a virus, how small a virus is, and the way that a virus can infiltrate us, and within days or weeks, we can die, we can perish. And so next to God, we are just incredibly weak. But even next to the universe, it only takes a moth and we can be crushed. So now that we've got these comparisons, we've seen the universe, we've seen ourselves next to God, 
What we now need to see is the way in which we, with all of our fragility, you know, that existence where even a moth can lead to our ruin, somehow the whole universe, we can watch the universe dissolve, but we can have peace and calm in our heart. How on earth is this possible? Well, let me read you the last two stanzas. The hymn writer says, But let the creatures fall around. Let death consign us to the ground. Let the last general flame arise and melt the arches of the skies. Calm as the summer's ocean, we can all the wreck of nature see, while grace secures us in abode, unshaken as the throne of God. Even though we're so fragile, because our hope rests not on ourselves, not on the universe, but on that God who is eternal and who is unchanging. What that means is that if he has prepared us an abode, a home, even if this whole natural order dissolved right before our eyes, that would not touch our hope because our hope isn't built upon this universe. It's built upon the existence and the promise and the faithfulness in the unchangeability of God. And so if we anchor ourselves in him, guess what? These circumstances that cause such anxiety and worry, we can lift our eyes off of them and we can find our heart begin to settle because our condition and our future and our good and our happiness, it's not dependent upon what's changeable. It's dependent upon God. And so let me encourage you, your hymn workout is to take this hymn and meditate on the eternity of God. Take a line, for example, the one that says, Beyond an angel's vision bright, thou dwellest in self-existent light. This picture of God's luminous presence, which shines with undiminished ray. Let yourself just sit and imagine uh, that heavenly presence of God in the way that he's not affected by all of these circumstances. And if he's not affected by them, then that means that we can have faith and trust in the midst of them. So think on this hymn and let it bring calm and peace to your heart.